Okay, so let's prove that this language is not regular. So it's the set of all strings over zero one star, such that the string has the same number of zeros and ones. So as an example, if I look at the string zero one zero one, that clearly has the same number of zeros and ones in it. So that would be, let's call this language L. So this would be in L. But if I look at the string 0, 0, 0, 1, that has a different number of zeros and ones. And so that thing is not in L. Okay. So I want to show that this thing is not regular. So there are actually several ways of doing that. And one that's actually very straightforward. So I could go through the whole pumping lemma argument again, and I will do that. But there's one way that you can do it, which is really quick, which let's, I, actually I'm gonna call this language L prime for now. Uh, I may switch back to L, uh, but I'm just gonna leave it as prime. So let's look at L, L prime. Well, it's kinda like the, the zero to the n, one to the n example. It's just slightly different in that we have any ordering of the zeros and ones. But in the zero to the n, one to the n case, we had the zeros first and then the ones second after the zeros. So is there such a way that I can enforce the ordering with this without changing the regularity of whether this thing is regular or not? And it turns out we can. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna intersect this language, this uh, same number one right here, with the set zero star, one star. So we know that this thing right here is a regex <laughs> because it is a regex. So if this thing is regular, so if L prime is regular, then regular languages are closed under intersection. And so therefore this thing is regular. But what is this thing? Well, what is this set? Well, it's the set of all strings that have the same number of zeros and ones and the zeros come first and then the one second. Well, that's just, that's just zero to the n, one to the n. And we know already because we've proven it before that this purple thing is not regular. And so if L prime is regular, then the right hand side is regular because we know this thing is regular. So the only possible thing, way that this thing could not be regular is if the left thing is not regular. And so that proves that it is not regular. So from that, we can, we have effectively shown that L prime is not regular. But suppose that we wanted to prove this straightforward uh, it, without any closure properties whatsoever. Well, the thing that we can do is use the proof of zero to the n, one to the n not being regular verbatim, except changing L for L prime. Because why? In fact, I have the proof right here. So we have, we've shown before that zero to the n, one to the n is not regular. Well, let's see. So suppose I just change this to L prime, L prime. Well here, this string is in the bottom language because it has the same number of zeros and ones. We don't enforce any ordering here, so as long as it has the same number, that's all we care about. So here, it's the same string, therefore all of the decompositions are exactly the same. So, so this is exactly the same. Well then, if we look at the resulting string, which is, which is this one right here, the condition of being in the language is exactly the same because we're not changing where the zeros are over here. So we didn't have a structural problem with zero to the n, one to the n. We have, um, we're just checking the set, whether they're the same number or not, which is exactly what this condition is. So effectively, we can use the exact same proof as the zero to the n, one to the n example, which is pretty dang cool. So what my advice is, try to use either closure properties or use the proof or adapt the proof of some other language to use for this language. And it turns out to be very, very powerful. Another closure property technique, which 
isn't very effective here, but uh, we may see it later, is to use, say, like uh, complement. If the language that we started out with is regular, then the complement language is also regular because regular languages are closed under complement. So if we can show that the complement is not regular, then that shows that the original thing is not regular. And sometimes that's a lot easier. So often we intersect things with regexes like this. It preserves the regularity of whatever this is. Um, well, actually it doesn't, but if this thing is regular, then the resulting thing is regular. So then the contrapositive is, if the resulting thing is not regular, then the original thing couldn't have been regular. So it preserves the regularity in that sense. So use these techniques, it's very, very useful.